Okay, uh, so uh, in this particular book, I think uh, there are a number of things which uh, I'm trying to discuss in this particular book. But uh, what is key among is this, I think, in, in this one, where we're saying effective human resource management is key to the national development. So you find if you go to chapter 10 of this particular book, is looking at to say maybe there was need for Malawi to recreate the human resource profession whereby people who should practice human resource management should be people who are qualified in the field but also at the same time they have got time, some kind of experience uh, uh, in terms of handling of human resource management and this is going to lead to uh, making of rational decisions and also professional decisions and also ethical decisions because sometimes you might find that people can be moved from one department to another to just go to the human resource because they are not performing in that department and in the end they end up working in the uh, this particular department of human resource management so it is always a problem because you might find that the organization can be making irrational decisions and uh, it can lead to a lot of compensation on unfair terminations and even sometimes facing a lot of uh, litigations and also because you find that uh, the law in Malawi is mostly silent when it comes to issues of uh, uh, for example issues of promotion uh, issues of uh, training uh, and even issues of uh, uh, performance management even acting appointments recruitment yeah, because of these uh, things it, 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 in the end the top executive can influence a certain kind of decisions and favor their colleagues who are there to, uh, so that they are able to attain the higher positions. So you find that because of that um, the, the lack of uh, regression of the human resource management profession. So in this book, in the last chapter, we are saying there was need for us to regrade the human resource profession to ensure that the people who are practicing HRIMU in Malawi are people who are qualified and also uh, because we were sure that uh, they can be able to make national decisions which can lead to motivation of the employees and lead to uh, the national development. Because when there is productivity uh, at the uh, individual level, the productivity of the department will go high, which eventually is going to increase the productivity of the organization, eventually the national development. But also at the same time, I think in this chapter we are also focusing on issues of uh, having better laws but in zero adherence. We have better laws and also policies, but you find that you are not adhering. I'll give an example, the Pension Act. How many employers are adhering or they have put their employees on pension? Even when they have detected, how many are limiting the pension, for example? In terms of even how do we construct our buildings? How many are able to construct buildings which are disability friendly in light of the Disabilities Act, and also at the same time, how many employees are compensating their employees when they are being involved in, in an accident in, in light of the uh, Workers' Compensation Act? But also, how many employees take care of their uh, <coughs> employees with regard to national asset issues? And the, what we need to appreciate also is the fact to say there are a lot of cases which are there related to the national security. Uh, and also at the same time, one thing we need to appreciate is that the, um, there is a need for us, for example, how many employers tend to have unions and adhere to the unions, for example. But also at the same time, how many unions are being suffocated in the country, for example. Yeah, so and also how many organizations have uh, uh, addressed it, unions with the, the joint authority committee and the GCC. So you find that there is a, we have got a lot of laws in Malawi which are very good, but how many employees, employers are adhering to those laws? So this book is trying to address all those things. And also at the same time, we look at issues of gender, for example, to say uh, how many people are able to have, uh, comply to gender issues. And the, what we need to appreciate is uh, as a country, we need to appreciate to say uh, if we are not to work as a country, the rights of employees are respected, but also if employees are being paid within the set minimum uh, wages or above, and even if the working conditions are better. And also uh, 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 at the same time, if in the recruitment and other workplace opportunities are offered on, on, on merit, for example, the promotions, but also the safety and health of the employees are taken into account. And also, when if the employers are contributing pension to their employees, 
for example, and also the employees are able to exercise their rights by formation of unions so that they should promote their rights. And also at the same time, and it's always also important, uh, if the employers can uh, exercise their rights by also ensuring that the, the workplace uh, is friendly to disabilities and also there are equal opportunities to people who are having disabilities as discussed in chapter 9 of this particular book. But also to ensure that there is no discrimination uh, with regard to one's political affiliation. I think if you read the Employment Act under section 2, I mean under section 5, subsection 2, you find that there is no need for discrimination with regard to one's political affiliation, to one's tribe, to one's religion, to one's culture, to one's age, to one's uh, sex, among other things. So we can only develop as a country uh, if we have this kind of, uh, uh, <clears throat> if we avoid the kind of discrimination. And at the same time, if we also, we're not going to focus as a country, if those people who are coming from abroad, working in Malawi, they have got the proper payment, employment payments and also are qualified in their respective fields. You might find that to say there are others who are able to work in Malawi, but they don't have the requirement or the temporary employment payments, for example. So, and also another thing that we also to understand is to ensure, which we always uh, argue uh, oftentimes is to say, if organizations are qualified and which are people working as human resources um, management professional. But also at the same time, the Ministry of Labor, if it is supported with financial resources, to ensure that it's able to inspect the workplaces through the Ocean Safety Health Department, but also even as labor officers, they should be able to weather employers are adhering to the Employment Act, for example, our employers are adhering to the Workers Compensation, our employers are adhering to the Pension Act, are the employers are adhering to the Ocean Safety Health and Welfare Act. So I think that can also help employees. So the whole idea is to ensure that uh, employers and employees are also aware of the labor laws. And what is important to appreciate is to say the employees and the employers have to be aware of the labor laws and adhere to them. So I think even if employers had mechanisms of handling sexual harassment and the caprice are being brought to book in light of the uh, gender policy. So all this, uh, whatever the book is trying to discuss, is to say if these things are done, in Malawi, I feel that the Malawi economy can develop because people will be handled professionally and they'll be motivated to work hard, eventually increasing the productivity of the, of the organizations, which consequently is going to lead to improvement in the national development. So I think that's what this book is trying to conclude as a way of concluding the book in terms of the, uh, the chapters which are in this book. And all these, these things should be related to the Malawi 2063. So I think. He, uh, the book also in the last uh, chapter is trying to propose some of the things in order to realize the might of the vision. I think what we need to do is one of our key things we need to uh, uh, reform the, uh, the, the labor industry and also we need to empower the Minister of Labor and these departments to ensure that they are able to manage um, uh, uh, the economy in a professional way to ensure all the employees' rights are being respected. But also we may need to have an independent body as a regulator. Uh, I think it, that is like in the way the higher education is, the way the ICT sector or the energy sectors, so that we can have a, a, a body that is going to uh, recreate the labor industry. Because when you have a body like a start of recreating something, I think there is always a fit in it. So maybe we would have an independent body to recreate the labor industry. But also there was need for us to uh, enforce inspection of the workplaces or review the inspection tools that they are using to ensure that every uh, workplace is being inspected or even each and every day because there's a requirement to say every workplace has to be registered so we should be able to ensure that the workplaces are also being registered but also we should also ensure that the employers are always conversant with the various labor laws but also if any investor whether a trader or a development partner or an NGO is to come to operate into the country they should have mechanisms in place for effective adherence to the country um, laws and also where necessary the ministry of labor should be involved in providing licenses to such kind of organization to operate in malawi in terms of after having satisfied how they're going to manage the, the labor force but also there's need for frequent studies on the welfare of employees in malawi and how they are treated by the uh, employers 
and also there was need for support to meet certain qualifications and the graduates from targeted programs because sometimes you find that the, the qualifications that the investors are offering they are almost similar but maybe we might need to identify where are the, our labor skills which skills are missing in our economy as such we can be able to have such kind of um, tailor made programs to fill those gaps and also there was need for uh, for example I'll give example uh, maybe we need to more uh, uh, labor in the fields like you know, carpentry, food processing, technical education, medicine, animal science, among other things, so that we can be able to propel our economy. But also, if we have got institutions like NIF, for example, if these uh, uh, bodies could be providing loans to, to graduates who or professionals who can be able to build a business together and set up a company to supply certain products, and maybe food processing, for example. Up until now, as economy, we still import um, tomato sauce. But if we, we have, uh, let's say, a uh, team of food processing, let's say from Luana, and uh, if you live in the NRC, you might find that uh, they can be able to team up and form a company, but they have to need, they need capital. So even, uh, I'll give an example, yeah, I'll give example, even in the, uh, Holding industry, for example, there are certain machines which these people might require to ensure that maybe they're able to make products which are of international standard. But also, I think these are some of the things which we need to be thinking of, also, and, and also, uh, but also, we need to maybe to amend some of the laws which are there in Malawi uh, in terms of the Employment Act. And this, so we should be speaking to the current issues. You might know that uh, apart from the amendments which have been there in 2011, in, in 2011, in 2021, but we need an overhaul review of the Employment Act of uh, the, the Occupation Safety Health, uh, the Workers' Compensation, the EZG, likewise the way we did with the um, um, Qualification Act. So this book is trying to propose some of the solutions which we feel if they are to be adhered, I think it is going to increase productivity of our economy and therefore contribute to the Malay 2063, which we aspire to achieve. We can only achieve if our labor industry is motivated so that they are able to work hard and contribute to the success of our economy. So, thanks so much for uh, listening.